Um, yeah, sure. Um, I never took uh, a course in in design, um, but we did have a Photoshop class uh, during my studies. It was a really small part uh, of uh, of the entire course, but I found it really interesting. And um, together with two other guys of my uh, studies, I uh, decided to explore it some more. So we um, went online and uh, did a lot of uh, tutorials and um, tried out a lot of effects and stuff and pretended to be designers and we pretended to be illustrators. And eventually I pretended to be a motion designer. And over time, gradually, um, I guess I became one and um, got more and more uh, clients along the way and more better uh, projects. I started doing uh, flyers and small uh, identity projects uh, for uh, people in my, in my circle. And um, yeah, I gradually worked my way up the ladder in Amsterdam working for ad agencies, uh, design studios, and directly for clients. And um, yeah, here I am. Not sure. I was always drawing letters uh, during, during uh, primary school, I guess, even. Uh, just making my name in graffiti-like letters and experimenting with that, coloring them in, and um, it also was mesmerized by a lot of the 80s cartoons, um, stuff like uh, Transformers, Samurai Pizza Cats, Thundercats, that kind of stuff. I love the action and the camera movement and all the, the effects with swords and laser guns. And um, I guess that's where the basis is late for me, but um, the first thing time I got into contact with motion design, I can't really recall, but I know I uh, did my first work in Flash and then in uh, Macromedia Director and then finally moved on to After Effects and that's where it, it really kicked off for me. But um, yeah, I did, I did a lot of uh, just experiments and personal work to try to get the hang of it. And somehow people started asking me to, uh, to do it for money. So uh, yeah, I'm really lucky to uh, uh, have rolled into the business that way. It's a really slow process because in the beginning I was um, kind of a jack of all trades and I tried illustration and I tried some uh, print design, I did some book design, um, all for which I was never trained to do it. But um, along the way, I kind of found my own uh, voice uh, in terms of aesthetics and also the things that I did like and, and didn't like uh, to do. And it gravitated more and more towards um, typography and um, more basic uh, geometric uh, shapes and, and, and simple color schemes. Um, and it's, it's, it's really hard to say that there was a certain turning point for me. It's that you start this big and then you gradually find that small part that works for you and where you can really um, thrive, I guess. When it comes to creating fonts, I, um, I have a heavy imposter syndrome. <laughs> I always do, uh, when I create fonts myself, it's more of kind of a display typeface, uh, really modular uh, repeating shapes. Um, not so good at designing series or humanist type. Um, but I really know what I like and um, I really like to collaborate with people that are better than me and now with anamography. Um, 
I really start to see the benefit of collaboration with type designers that do an amazing job in their field. Um, and um, the way I can add motion to it or work with motion designers that uh, I can connect with type designers that would be a great fit um, on an aesthetic level. Uh, so that's, that's how it changed for me f from making stuff myself to kind of becoming a person who cr uh, connects and curates people and try to form a collection of animated typefaces around it. So I, I, like I said, I never went to, uh, to art school or anything, but um, I learned a lot online and like uh, everyone in this industry, uh, people like uh, Andrew Kramer are, are yeah, I guess they could be called a mentor because th they showed me the first uh, tips and tricks of After Effects. But um, on a wider level, I think uh, my, my parents can be called a mentor because they always had their own uh, business. And uh, I really learned a lot from them uh, about just uh, work ethic, I guess, and uh, try working hard and, 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 and going about it on your own and trying to make something from nothing. And... Um, as far as design mentors, yeah, I have I have my heroes, but they're not really my mentors, I guess. I like a lot of the 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 classic Dutch designers, uh, such as uh, Wim Krawel, who's uh, really into this uh, super strict uh, grid-based modular typography. Uh, I love the Dutch illustrator uh, Dick Bruna, who makes this. Uh, really seemingly simple illustrations with, with really um, minimal uh, color palettes, but they're so perfect and everything is drawn by hand while it looks like it's vector, but uh, yeah, he's a real craftsman. Yeah, I, I look up to those people and uh, yeah, they really inspire me, even though they're not necessarily in my field. A uh, typical day is um, dropping my kids off at school and then uh, going to the studio, have breakfast at the studio in front of my computer while I watch a bit of uh, anime. And then after half an hour, I uh, really get to work. I uh, make a list with the uh, things to do that day. It's uh, mostly uh, first half an hour to an hour of answering emails and um, uh, checking off stuff from my to-do list and then and, 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 um, planning ahead and then it's uh, uh, some hours to uh, to design uh, and, and, and animate. I always have a couple of animated typefaces in the works um, so I'm always um, juggling between projects and uh, then it's lunch and after lunch we always play a game of uh, foosball in the studio. It's uh, it's a uh, how you call it? It's a tradition, and uh, we never skip. Um, and then some more designing, animating, and at the end of the day, there's always uh, uh, some other tasks that I have to get done, like uh, administration. And um, because I run a web shop, there's always something to do there. And um, yeah, then picking up the kids again, have dinner, always with the family together and then uh, going to the climbing gym for some exercise, and then after bed. For me, work-life balance really changed uh, after becoming a father. Uh, I used to work a lot of late nights uh, and weekends, and um, it was really a workaholic, and I liked it that way because I like my work and I um, can never stop it and uh, always uh, trying to push uh, to get better and to do more and um, be super effective with my time. But um, I think in the long run, that's not really a healthy, sustainable uh, thing to do. Um, so after I got uh, first one and then a second kid, 
that really dictated my uh, my rhythm of life and um, because I have to drop them off at school so I can start at seven o'clock like I sometimes uh, wanted to um, and I have to pick them up again so uh, and we always want to have uh, family dinner every day so it, yeah that really forces you to um, to, to work with the hours that you have and, and not be um, working weekends long because you have to be uh, in the playgrounds or playing football with your kids and, and doing that kind of fun stuff. And um, at first I struggled really hard with it because um, it felt it was like um, a too big impact on my professional ambitions. Uh, but I realize that work is important but it's not the most important thing in life um, and i really enjoy seeing my kids grow up and spending time with them and seeing them learn all kinds of amazing stuff so that's that's super nice and i kind of became a bit more relaxed in that and um, i also don't have a computer at home um, because then i would also after the kids would go to bed, I would open it up and start working again and go to bed too late and be uh, cranky in the morning. So um, that for me is really a fail safe to take some uh, take some rest at night and only work in the studio. So I have work there, home here, and it's nicely separated and there's no overlap and no gray area. So uh, yeah, for me that really works out, but could be different for the next guy, I guess. I tend to not look at blogs and, and design press that much. Um, but of course I have, uh, like everyone has, an, 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 a curated Instagram feed uh, where stuff pops up and um, you can save stuff and, and, and review it later. Um, same with, uh, I have a lot of different Pinterest boards for typography, for um, geometric shapes and textures and stuff. Um, but it can come from anywhere, really. And um, I really like uh, physics, like real life physics, um, like how pendulum swings work, the, the map behind it. Um, gears and uh, all kinds of machines and uh, also my kids toys and and and, and the colors uh, that I find around me uh, I think that's really inspiring um, but it's really hard to say like I go there for inspiration or there for inspiration I think if you keep an open mind it, it's 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 everywhere and then that's a cliche but it depends on how you look, not where you look, I think. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> funny question. It actually means uh, lizard. I used to practice uh, capoeira for years, and uh, you get a nickname. And I did it with my brother, my little brother, and he's, uh, he's really good at it. Um, and he used to um, paint his hair in all kinds of different colors. He had blue, green, purple. So he got the nickname Kamaliao, which means chameleon, because I'm his older brother. They named me Lizard. So um, that name kind of stuck with me. Um, and it became also my uh, professional uh, alias. But uh, I haven't practiced capoeira for years anymore, so... It's kind of an artifact of that past life. That's a good question. Uh, the, the, the animated typefaces I create are often a bit complex because I tend to go overboard a little. <laughs> um, and I see it like, like display typefaces. If you have a really good clean typeface it can be used for a lot of different things if you have a really uh, extravagant uh, display typeface it can only be used for um, covers or posters or that kind of stuff and the same with with motion it 
it can be super beautiful, but um, it doesn't necessarily have a wide range of uses. So uh, mostly simple is best, but then uh, again, sometimes it's really nice to go do that extra step and see where you can take it. And um, when it's used properly and with moderation, then it can really stand out and shine. But I think for most cases, the simpler, the better, the more honest and clean, the more stronger it will become. But um, yeah, it really depends on, on the situation and, uh, and how and where it's used, I guess. I have a sketchbook full of ideas and I never have the time to, uh, to actually execute all of them. And that's, uh, that really frustrates me. But um, one thing that I always do is look at it as a system. Um, instead of in individually animate letters, um, you have to uh, look ahead and see how the flow is when you create a word with it. Um, so it has to look good as single pieces, but also um, as a longer word or as a longer text, it should flow. And um, yeah, that really dictates my design process to um, look at it as a, as a whole, as a system, instead of uh, just single pieces. It's just running into problems and trying to solve them. I used to watch a lot of tutorials to, to learn new stuff um, just for the sake of learning it uh, and, and becoming better. But now I just have an idea and you know it's possible because almost everything is possible now. But um, there are some hurdles to take to uh, get to that final execution. And um, yeah, then you just go and, and figure out the tools how to do it and, and what way um, I think you know which direction you should be looking for and there's always people that can help you and um, I have a pretty big network so I always have friends who are uh, better educated in a certain field who can help me out and um, I guess that's how I learn every day by just reaching out to other people who are smarter than me and uh, who can teach me stuff. I'm in the luxury position to make stuff for my own uh, collection and, and, and website and platform, but um, I only have to uh, judge it by my own taste now. Um, of course, there's, there, there's more to it, but uh, there's no art directors, there's no real deadline, so I have a lot of freedom to really um, try to do what I do and set my own standards. And uh, that's really the best thing you can ask for in terms of uh, yeah, a healthy work uh, ethic, I guess. So there's no, no pressure, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's, it's one of my favorites, favorite projects uh, from my for my entire career, I guess. Uh, I got asked to do them and um, they basically gave me a team which was Occulto, which is uh, hidden, the hidden part of type. Um, so that was my starting point to hide and reveal things. And um, they just said, good luck with it. There was no creative brief whatsoever. Um, the, the, the conference had um, a really simple color scheme, which was white, black, and orange. So I used that team of revealing and uh, unveiling to, um, yeah, to, to uh, reveal the speaker names. And yeah, I don't really, the way I animate is I, I tend to build kind of machines and installations uh, and then put a camera on top and um, just see how it plays out. It's really mechanical. So I built all kinds of machines to reveal um, the letters uh, of, the, of the speakers. Um, and I only showed it to them at the, at the very end when it was finished and they loved it. 
and I had a friend working on the on the on the sound design, and it was really important because the style is so minimal, and the sound plays such an important part. Because if you see a ball rolling on a surface, uh, you don't know if it's is if it's a rubber ball on a wood surface or if it's a really hard glass ball on a different on a uh, wooden surface. It makes a different sound. So. That really uh, dictated uh, the, the the scale of things and the uh, tacti tactile tactile aspect of it, and um, yeah, it all came together really nicely and um, yeah. Electric objects is uh, is 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 uh, basically a, a digital uh, art frame. It's a screen. It's uh, it's uh, nine by sixteen, and it's a really high quality um, screen, and it looks a bit like like Kindle, like paper. And um, I got invited to 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 make some work for it. And usually, motion graphics are really fast. You have to make uh, titles in in a really short amount of time, and it has to be really energetic and grab attention and stuff. But this is something that sits in a room, um, maybe on a shelf or on your wall. So it needs to grab attention, but in a whole different way. Um, and uh, I really took that, that, that aspect of, of, of time and, and energy um, and tried to create little machines for it again with rolling balls and stuff. And the idea was to have a ball going up really slowly uh, with a with a small conveyor belt, and then go down like a, a marble coaster, and it would uh, go through spirals and 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 through little pins and stuff, and then go at the bottom to waiting to be picked up again. And the idea was to have it go up in ten minutes, and then go down in like maybe uh, thirty seconds or so. And uh, unfortunately, the maximum length was two minutes, so I had to change that up, up a bit because I thought, well, it would be really nice to see it in the corner of your eyes sometimes and then see it, oh, is it going? No, it's gonna take two more minutes. And then you go back to work or washing the dishes and then you look again, oh shit, I missed it. So it was really for me to play with that kind of anticipation and waiting for something to happen. But um, I made three of them. And um, uh, it, it still has that, that factor, but I would love to exaggerate it a bit, little bit more. So now it goes up in two minutes and goes down in 30 seconds or so. Well, animography is born out of uh, a personal project called Motion, which was my first animated typeface. Um, I designed and animated it within a week, and the plan was to make something modular um, to combine my passions for typography and, and, and motion. And I thought if I uh, animate each letter individually, then I can um, arrange them into words, and each word will have a different uh, flow and will play out differently. And it's, uh, it's a way to, um, in a modular way, uh, create typographic animations. Um, and it 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 turned out better than I uh, expected at first, and um, so I made a, a couple of more. It was really interesting for me to work uh, with that kind of um, system. So I created two more animated typefaces, and I wanted to explore some more. And then I saw um, another uh, motion designer doing something similar, but with a more readable typeface called uh, the Gotham typeface, really well known. Um, and that's when something really clicked for me and uh, I reached out to him to see if he wanted to collaborate. And he was, uh, he was really keen on collaborating and um, therefore I had to change my, my setup as a, as a business because it, um, Kalango has always been my personal portfolio. Um, and if I wanted to do something that's a bit more open to collaboration, I thought a platform would be a better uh, a better way to do that. So 
um, with that first uh, collaborative animated typeface. Animography, animography became a platform and I um, actively beca uh, began seeking um, new ways of collaboration with uh, type and motion designers and yeah. Definitely animography. I did Kalanga for about 12 years and it's been an amazing journey to to build that from the ground up and um, I still love many of the projects that I've done but I'm really ready to move forward and work in a different way where I'm not necessarily working for clients directly but um, working more aut autonomously um, I make my own uh, make my own typefaces and collaborate with with people without um, the constraints of uh, art directors, budgets, deadlines, brand guidelines, uh, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, work in a more creative way and try to um, set my own path and. Um, be my own client really. I have a studio in Amsterdam and um, since a few weeks I have someone uh, working with me there now um, but it used to be me and my computer and a slack group with a lot of people there a lot of type designers, motion designers, uh, programmers who make uh, the, the After Effects scripts and um, yeah it's just a big family of, of people putting in creative energy and good vibes and it's 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 really nice everyone is really supportive um, towards one another and um, I kind of try to orchestrate everything and um, build a solid brand around it and also on the other end towards uh, end users try to make a website that's super simple and functional and try to um, show the typefaces in a good way uh, that's that's really clear um, to show what 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 it can do and what other controllers can do and how it could adapt to um, different projects and uh, so it's it's really a different way of working than than working for for clients directly on a project by project basis and uh, it's really interesting to um, also dive into all the, the all the statistics that a uh, that a website has a web shop um, to see um, where people are on what which uh, page they're landing or how many people reach checkout and stuff. That's uh, that's all new for me, but it's really interesting to see that whole process uh, from the other end. Yes, but that's not really within my own skill set um, but uh, yeah it would be really nice to to um, work with people to get my animated typefaces on top of live action footage um, so that's definitely something that's uh, that's on my wish list but um, yeah it's always a struggle for time and uh, yeah I have, s I have so many things on my plate already so yeah priorities Motion design for me is the overlap between animation and graphic design. So for me, it's all about um, basic things like shapes, colors, typography, layout, um, conveying a message, uh, and not so much about character animation or um, special effects, that kind of stuff, but more like traditional graphic design on a timeline. There's a lot of uh, medium-sized boutique studios and then there's a whole bunch of uh, freelancers and I also think that uh, a lot of other people are, are dipping into uh, motion design now. I think illustrators are um, finding ways to um, put like simple animation into their work and, and making little loops and putting it on uh, on Instagram and I see a lot of uh, programmers um, doing like small UI stuff uh, to make uh, 
they were coming alive. So I think it's slowly seeping into other uh, disciplines uh, now a lot. And I see that a lot in my own network and my the, the co-working space that I work in. Just be curious and try to figure stuff out on your own and um, try to dissect stuff that you like, see why it works. Why is it, why is a certain piece of work good or interesting? Um, maybe try to recreate it and learn from it and then set out on your own to do your own uh, version of something. I think, and this has been said many times before, but everything is a remix. And um, I think finding out uh, what, what really works for you, what really makes you thick, then uh, you can try to find your own style and see what you can add to something that's already there and how can uh, how can you make something your own and how can you make that little twist that makes something interesting again for for you um, my next project is uh, rebranding anamography as a platform i've been uh, playing around with a uh, new color scheme and some new uh, illustrations and also try to uh, optimize the logo a bit, the small stuff. But um, yeah, I think anamography is going through puberty now. Um, we had a lot of uh, nice experimental typefaces and um, I became a bit more strict in curating the collection and uh, finding new ideas for new animated typefaces. And I think and I'm always at this point that from now on, we're going to do things like super seriously and super um, professional and uh, yeah, take the next step. But I think I was at that same place a year ago and I will be at the same place a year from now. So there's always that next step that you're uh, about to take. Just yesterday, seeing the work of all the other speakers was, was really amazing. And I had to talk with, uh, with, with David. And he has so much incredible uh, UI design in all the, all the movies that he works on. And also, there's a lot of typography there and a lot of uh, nice glitchy, glitchy work. And um, yeah, I could really see my animated typography integrated in that and um, so that would be really amazing to make that kind of connections uh, I don't know if even know where I see myself in, in, in five or two years but hopefully um, I can make this thing grow and um, get some more staff on board can afford that and um, become more of a creative director that that delegates um, and uh, get people on board that are better at me than in, in, in certain fields. So uh, we can really um, feed off one another and um, yeah, see where, where I can take this anamography thing, how far I can take it. I always like branding. Um, and, and, and brand design uh, and I have been doing some uh, animated typefaces uh, bespoke for brands already um, but it would be nice to do some some more of that and um, yeah that's a big appeal for for global sports brands so uh, yeah I think that would be amazing to do a an, an animated typeface that could be a part of an identity for um, for Nike, for example. So yeah, a lot of resources that um, I didn't have in terms of um, well, there were tutorials and all kinds of stuff, but you see all these amazing uh, lifelike three D renders now, and it's. Computers are getting faster, of course, every day, and technology is getting better and, and more friendly to use. And um, so, yeah, I have, I, have, I have high hopes. And um, I think 
any generation has kind of this fear of being uh, uh, getting caught up with uh, with the, the the younger generation and um, being blown away by that and being totally uh, useless <laughs> from that point on. But then again, it's not about software. It's 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 not about techniques. It's all about uh, creative process and. Um, I think it it takes a few years to um, to kind of find your voice and find out what works for you, and then you can try to plan ahead and make steps. Because you start with a wide curiosity, and then it, at least for me, that was the case, and then it narrows down to something that you're really into, and then you can try to find um, a nice trajectory of where you want to take that. But um, I guess that takes years of trying out stuff and seeing stuff and um, getting sidetracked and, and getting uh, caught up in dead ends and stuff. So, yeah.